Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to part 3 of the ephemera making series. Today we will be making these little flip down notepads. I will first of all show you what it is so you can decide if you want to continue watching. Then we're going to go ahead and create some together. I've got my instructions over here that I'll share with you guys as always. And after we have completed some more, I'm going to share some ideas on how you can use them in journal, placement in a journal and that sort of thing. So let us begin by talking about what they are. So I'm calling it a flip down notepad simply because it flips down and inside is a notepad or in this case there's two notepads. There's also a pocket here at the front where I've placed some tags and there's a few different variations here. Uh, like for example, let's have a look at this one. This one's got a pocket, uh, a notepad down the bottom and it's got an extra pocket on the inside for some more tags or whatever you might want to put in there. And then this one has just the one, oh, this one's got two notepads. I think I might have already, no, I didn't show this one. Uh, let's have a look at this one. This one just has one notepad on the inside and then this space can be used and decorate it in any way that you wish. You can place a photo there, you can journal about the photo. I mean, there's so many uh, different things that you can do with this idea. And let me just mention here that this is just an idea that you can use and you can uh, develop your own way. And there's so many different things that we can do with this thing as there is in most of the things that we make for journals. So this is just an idea to get your inspiration flowing and your um, creative juices flowing, I guess. Uh, so I think we should start to make some together now. So I've got my instructions here. And the first thing that you need to do is choose your paper. So you want the paper to be, I wrote here A4 size, only because I think I will do an A4 size for the video. But the, the only thing really that you need to look at is you want your paper to be long like this. So for example, if you use, let's say, let me just get a scrap of paper over here. If you use something like this, even though this is longer than it is wide, it's still when you fold it the way you need to fold it, it still it kind of looks like an envelope. But for the for this type of thing, because there's a little notepad inside, the notepads usually are longer. So that's the only thing. You, you can use any size paper that you want, but you need to make sure that it's long enough. So uh, for demonstration purposes, I will use A4 size. Uh, so as you can see here, I've also used a scrapbook paper. So this one, let me just have a look. This one, I think probably is it longer. Yes. So that one's longer. So length doesn't matter. The only thing you need to look at is they don't need to be exactly the same, but you want your strip of paper to be long. I think I'm making sense. Okay. So let's head on to the next step. Okay, so I decided to use this A4 sheet of paper. So A4 basically is just the standard printer paper size. So uh, this I have you I have dyed this using party bag streamers. I will link that video down before. And I just realized this little area here it looks like a bird. So that's really cute. Uh, yeah, so you can use party streamers to dye your paper so you can get a nice color. And then here I've just placed the party streamers on top and that's how it looks. And that actually looks quite beautiful in a journal. But this was on top of my pile, so I'm going to use it for this project. So basically what we want to do, I'm going to find a half mark over here and then cut it in half. It doesn't have to, you know, be right in the, in the middle, but that's just what I'm doing. So... Uh, here's another little tip. My, my trimmer, paper trimmer is very blunt, so when I cut it, it's not giving me a good edge. Can you see that? Because it's so blunt. So what I do is um, I just use scrap paper. So this is just some drawings that we're not keeping. So I just put it underneath whatever it is that I'm cutting. And then I get a nice clean cut. So there you go. If you didn't know that little trick, now you do. Okay, so now I have I have my two long strips. So what we're going to do is um, 
fold the top down to create a flap. I'm just going to just approximately fold the top down to create a flap. That's number three. Number four is fold the bottom up just under the crease. So you can see the crease here. And now we are folding the bottom up. But we're not folding all the way up to the crease. We're leaving a little bit of space. Okay, so we're leaving a little bit of space only because once you put your notepad in there, you want to have you want to have a little bit of space so that the flap can close down completely. So now we're creasing down the bottom. Okay, so before we continue, I just want, want to mention one thing. If you are using book page, well, this isn't book page, it's actually coloring uh, book pages. So they usually have a direction. Let's find a book page, hang on. So they, uh, book pages have a direction. So can you see how on this one, the writing is the correct way? So if that's one thing you want to keep in mind and on the inside, the writing is the wrong way, which is why I've placed two notepads in there just to cover up the writing. So if you want the right side on the front of your flip down notepad before folding, so if you have it turned this way, you need to turn it upside down. See how it's upside down? So you need to turn it upside down and then fold so that you will have a correct writing going the right way. So that's just a thing to keep in mind. The same thing uh, for images. So for example, this one here, see how it's uh, I folded it upside down. So when I actually fold it the right way, so this page number, for example, it's the right way. So this one here is actually not the right way. So it's the right way on the inside. Not that you can see. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't make a huge difference. Only if it does uh, create a problem, then you need to look at this sort of thing. So it's upside down. The leaves are going the wrong way, but it still is fine. It still works. So, okay, so we have folded the bottom uh, up just under the crease and now what we're going to do is first of all I didn't write this in here so you just need to check that everything meets nicely so I didn't cut this very well so I have this little part here sticking out um, so I just will trim that down so that I have a nice straight edge here okay here we go a nice straight edge so next thing we're going to do is if you like this distressed edge over here and like over here see how it's nice and distressed then you need to do the following step which is rip the very edge of the top flap so we've got the flap and then we've got the very edge of it and then you just want to rip we've ripped okay the next thing we need to do is ink all the edges I'm using this this uh, brushed of course I can't pronounce that word corduroy cord, uh, cord I don't know whatever that is it doesn't really matter what you use we're just distressing we just want to make this these edges stand out so I do have a, a purple one which would have gone which would have looked really nice on this on here but I think this looks nice too. So you need to ink pretty much the flap and this one. You don't really need to ink here because that's going to be on the back. You can. You can ink whatever you want really. You don't even have to ink. You can, you can make your own decisions. You can decide if you want to ink and what you want to ink, right? Okay, so now that that's inked up, we've inked all around. Let's go to the following step. Okay, so that's ready. Now we need to choose what we're going to put inside. So I have used just standard, uh, just some paper. Actually, to be honest, I used really... Uh, the kind of paper that I don't love using in my journals. So this paper is quite, it comes from a notepad over here. 
and it's quite thin so that's the sort of thing that I use in, inside you can use just a uh, normal tea dyed paper so you choose what paper you want to use on the inside okay so I've just got a little bit of this paper left over it's already trimmed down like this but it's still too big for my little notepad so this is what I'm going to use so now I'm going to fold this in half and I've got three sheets which gives me six sheets oh I've got four sheets that's interesting so should I do I'll do I'll just leave it as, as no I'll do two and I'll leave two for the other one so usually I do for most of the ones that I've already done I've done three sheets so that gives you six pages and that gives you 12 uh, sides so now the next thing I want to do is measure how much I need to trim off so I like to leave a little bit of space on both sides so let's say I will trim around there the length is good it's perfect okay so here's my little notepad and now I need to bind this notepad to the top crease so you can bind it variations over here I wrote and you've already seen you can have two notepads one here one here you can have the notepad in this crease instead uh, this you know you decide what you want to do but let's just go with we are going to bind this notepad to the top of the crease and what I have used in all of mine is staples and you can't even see them see here the only place you can see them is on the inside in the middle so for this if you have the long stapler actually okay if you have the long stapler you can just go ahead and staple but I can't do that with my stapler because it's not long enough so the way that I do it you need one of these staples that open up most of these big ones open up oh this one opens up too I can use the little one but because I've used the big one on all of mine I'm just going to use the big one so the next thing that I'm going to do is I protect my table and then I just use a mouse pad for this part you can use instead of a mouse pad you can use uh, just cardboard but you need something underneath to protect your surface because the stapler might, will go go through and might uh, damage your table so we are the bandi binding method we're using is the stapler you can bind with thread like you would usually a journal uh, the three pamphlet stitch or you can just sew right through with the sewing machine that would look pretty cool too in which case you would just go right through with the sewing machine but what I'm doing here is I'm just going to staple it so uh, you can see that the stapler has I don't know if you can see but there's a tiny little groove in here and I actually pop that groove right on top of the crease so I make sure everything is in place sometimes it goes right right where I want it to and sometimes it doesn't so it's not exact science but I try to do my best okay so you will see now that that's stapled to my mouse pad and now just pull it out and then you will see that on the other side the staples are sticking up and then I just pretty much uh, carefully use my fingers to pop the staples to close the staples I know that you can't see but I'm just so I just know oh, here we go close the staple and then to make sure oops I'm moving the camera then to make sure that they're completely closed I use something with a flat end just to uh, completely close them down because you don't want them to be sticking up and stabbing yourself or someone else so that's nice and flat and that's done okay so we have bound the notepad 
And now all that's left to do is to decorate. So uh, probably not the best choice of paper that I've used here because oh, all the goodness is on the back. But it doesn't matter because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to decorate. So on all of mine, I've used these little cards that I have. These are, I'm just going to go and get them and show you. They are little mini index, oh, index cards, mini index cards. And they were from, I got them from Dezo. And they're very very cheap two dollars eighty or something australian and basically what i did is i just tea dyed them uh, and then i used them in my project so i think this will look quite nice and as you can see i've used them everywhere you can use whatever you have so uh, if you are gluing a pocket at the front you just want some uh, something a little bit more sturdy than just your standard paper because it's a pocket and you'll be putting things in and out you want it to have some sort of a structure so what I'm going to do is, of course, ink. And now I'm going to go ahead and decide how I'm going to decorate the pocket and the tags and all of that. So I might speed up this process. Okay, so this took me way longer than it needed to because I was trying to find something that goes well with this um, dark purple that I've got on the paper, but I didn't have much luck. So I am just going to improvise over here. Maybe something like this. I don't know. How does this look? I'm just going to go with it. So now I'm just going to glue this onto my index card with boil glue, very fast drying acetone based glue, which I love. As you may know, I've spoken about it many times before and glue everything down. And then I'm going to adhere my pocket onto the flip down. Not pad thing we're making okay so now to glue the pocket down we're just gluing oh, put too much glue so we're just gluing the three sides so uh, the tip that I've got for you over here is if you ever get confused oh which three sides I'm supposed to glue look at your thing put your hand there and then you know I know this is very basic but Jenny Belly taught me that, so I'm just passing it on. Okay, so we've done the pocket. Now I want to do something with my flap because it's just not, look at it, it's just not good enough, is it? It's not finished. You'll know when it's finished because you will look at it and you'll go, yes, that's done. So the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, decorate my flip, top flip with something. I'm going to look for something. Okay, so I went into my little box of ruffles. I have a video on these ruffle rolls if you want to have a look. So basically, I always have some ruffles on the ready that I can use in my project. So for example, over here, I have decided, you can see that there's all different uh, patterns and colors and stuff. So I've decided that this little section here looks quite good. So I'm going to use that. So all I need to do now my ruffle is ready already and I just need to cut approximately how much I need and if you're worried about it unraveling because you're cutting through the stitching no need to worry because the next thing we're going to do is glue it on actually the next thing we're going to do is of course ink the edges and then I will pop some glue right in the middle over the stitching so you'll see here my stitching is there i'm just going to pop this down right in the middle i loved using this in journals on uh, edges of pages and on all sorts of things and i have some ready always to go which is also a good thing 
so I don't need to spend too much time when I'm in the middle of decorating something like right now. So they're sticking out a little bit. I'm quite happy with that. doesn't bother me too much. Okay, and the next thing I need to do is add some tags to make my project completely finished. So let me go and do that. I'm just going to use some scrap file folder, I think it's called. So just two strips of paper. If you have some little tags already made, made up or purchased, just use that. Uh, you can put a little piece of paper in there, it doesn't have to be tags. So, of course, we're going to ink the edges up. I'm just going to make one of them smaller so that they look more appealing inside the pocket. Oh, I didn't cut that straight, did I? Okay, and the last thing I want to do is add a closure, if you want. The only reason why I'm adding a closure is because when they're first made, they kind of just stay up like this. Once they're stored in a journal, uh, they will okay, stay closed. So this is, uh, so in most uh, cases, this will only be temporary until it finds a home in a journal. So this was a very quick little thing that we've made today. I just want to show you some of the uh, variations. I've already showed you some, but as we said, you can have this one here. We've got, you can have the notepad down here and another little pocket. It's not decorated, you can decorate it. Another little pocket up the top. You've got the tags here and you've got, uh, I'm just using a tiny little peg as a closure. This one we have done together, looks like that. Very basic little tags inside, some decorating. Uh, and can you see most of them I used basically just a little bit of a ripped book page, which I've inked, and then a die cut in the middle or some sort of a focal point. And it's very, very effective. And I've done it in pretty much all of them. So this one here, I'm using a paper clip for a closure. And then there's two pads in here because I wasn't a fan of this writing being upside down. So that's why I added two little notepads in there. And this paper clip has some uh, ribbons up the top. And then we've got, let me show you this one. This one here, same sort of thing. Uh, a little notepad on the inside. It's scrapbook paper. And I just used this type of a closure. And that looks very effective too. Do you guys know how to do, should I do, should I show you how to do this type of a closure? Actually, I might have to leave it for another video. Yeah, I might have to leave it for another video. Uh, okay, so uh, two different types of closures. Uh, And then th there's this one. I think these scrapbook page ones look really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. So. Okay, and I think we need to now, uh, I'll pull out my journal. Just so I can show you how I would place, how I would use this and how I would place it in the journal. Alrighty, let's go inside this five signature monster, which is already embellished to the brim so once again i mean very simple quite simple 
really so you can have I've just happened to have a little belly band here so you can have it inside a belly band in which case you would remove this because you don't need it you can have it inside a pocket any pocket in a journal looks amazing you can have it clipped onto a page with a paper clip but kind of uh, I mean in that case you would have to sort of take it out which no problem and then again you wouldn't need the little peg so it looks beautiful like that in a journal you can have a little charm hanging off here just like I've do over here I've got some charms okay what else can we do let's see so you could oh, oh I need to take this off you could once again have it in a pocket it looks beautiful you could have it glued on a page let me just find a any page maybe a clear page something like this so you would glue the back you would glue the whole back and then you can open it up and use it as a notepad and this is good to use on pages that are unusable like um, is there any unusable pages maybe pages that have a book or like something like this see pattern there's too much you can't really write on that so you can glue something like this in this case I've glued this sticker but you can use glue this down or another thing you can do is just glue the three sides down here and then you can have a little pocket another little pocket up the top here and that looks really beautiful on that page too my light is not the best but you know uh, you can have it here at the back on the very back pay, um, cover and that looks quite nice uh, right there on the back and you can leave a pocket up there too so if I didn't have this little belly band here I think that would look really cool actually on the front of the book so as you open the book the first thing that you see here is this little flip down notepad you can have if you're gifting it you can write a note or you can write a note to yourself on uh, intention for the journal what you're using it for and that kind of thing so i hope that this has inspired your creativity somewhat today and you're coming up with all sorts of ideas i'm hoping that you're feeling really inspired look at how cool that looks it looks so cool uh, there are all sorts of things you can do with this and each little finished project will be as beautiful and as unique as you are right they're all different and they're all beautiful in their own way in my opinion anyway so let me know what you think in the comments down below thank you so much for being here with me today i just wanted to place these if you guys want to uh, take a screenshot just like that hey thank you so much for being here today i will link the other or i will link the playlist down below if you want to have a look at the other videos as well and all of the other videos that i have mentioned everything will be in the description box down below let me know if you have any questions thank you again for being here and i will see you in my next video bye